Hello everyone and welcome back to Subnautica. Um, it has been quite a while since my last episode and in that time a decent amount of updates have hit and so basically we are starting anew. Now last time we did have the small submarine built and also a small base going but this time I kind of want to build a little bit closer to our base because as you can see I, th I think it'll just be easier for us. Uh, but I will go over some updates that they did add. They changed how research is done, at least a little bit from what I remember. Uh, they have added some new creatures, of course. They changed the total landscape at the start here, and also, I think, added some effects for the seaweed areas. Um, completely overhauled the water. It looks so good. And uh, we're just going to hop in pretty much continue our mission from before and I'd really like to get some good progress this episode so I'm gonna be speeding along rather quickly we do know how to do things now so, so I'm gonna gather up some basic fish here for some food and water some metal salvage we need to find some copper for some batteries, as I need to find a scanner. Now, the scanner is an item that we're going to use to scan <laughs> some resources. Was there always those things flying around all the time? Huh. Okay, that's new, I think. Or maybe I just didn't pay attention enough. So we're getting some air sacs, we're getting some um, basic materials here, like quartz, titanium. What is that, sand or something? Yeah, dig sand. Not something I care about. I want to try and get some rubber so I can make some fins right off. And then also I need a, you know, larger kind of air tank. If I could, it took me a while to find that word. So let's get some quartz for our rubber. Let's get some air here using this thing. There we go. Those little, uh, I don't know what they're called. They just produce air bubbles. So it's always good to kind of harvest stuff around them. And let's see, any, uh, some titanium. Oh, last piece of quartz that I might need for now. Alright, back to the surface. Go ahead and cook up some food. Drink one of our air sac fish. They're still polishing the game as always, but I have such high hopes for this game over time here. Alright, so we'll eat these two. And let's see, right, left, eat, eat. And I'll fabricate one thing of water from this air sac here. Cool. Now we'll break this Scrap metal into titanium. Kind of clears up our inventory space as well, which is nice. You'll also notice this, uh, what's it, what's this thing called again? Fabricator? It actually shows the item in a 3D model that you're making now. It doesn't just do a little cube anymore. It's, uh, it's nice. It's, it's a nice visual upgrade, far more immersive. I'm kind of draining my power by doing this so quick, but it is needed. So we got our fence, which is the first thing that I really wanted. And then we're going to need a scanner, which is a battery, which can I make? I can make a battery. So we'll go ahead and grab our scanner here. Good. Check our inventory. We've got so much titanium. So, scanner, let's put in slot one, 
And fins we already have equipped, which is good. Uh, let's see what it takes to make an uh, air tank here. The pipe. There, we need glass. How do you make glass again? Let's see. It's quartz. So, we'll probably just go right back out here. After dumping Attention. some stuff off. Detecting increased local radiation levels. Trend is consistent with ongoing degradation of the Aurora's dark matter drive core due to damage sustained during collision. Continuing to monitor. Well, thank you for monitoring that because it's going to explode. But uh, at least it'll tell me so we get to see it again. It is one of the coolest things, for sure, to watch that thing explode. It's such a big ship. The Aurora. And we'll have to get back inside and try and repair it this time for sure. Something I failed to finish last time. Let's see if we can't get some air real quick. Look for send any rock outcrops that we can use over here. Titanium. I don't care much about titanium because to me it's rather easy to find with all the crash ship parts here. There's some quartz. Quartz is good. Copper would be even better. Grab a boomerang for a snack eventually. Some more air bubbles here. Now if I remember correctly, there was... There we go. It's over here. There were some rock outcrops last time we were in this area. Scan this? What does this even do? If I scan the rock. Searching. Hmm. I wonder if the scanner has like a little radar thing. I haven't Emergency. used it yet. Oh wait. This, this is a seamoth fragment. So we can actually scan this now. And I believe we need five fragments to complete the blueprint for our Seamoth this time. Yep, we're 20% through. Uh, it's the gas guys. Let's stay away from them for a little bit longer. Ooh, a cave. What's down here? Nut, uh, what are you? I'm gonna stay away from you. I don't know what those are, but they're red. And red things are generally bad. Wow, the kelp area looks way darker than normal. Or it's because we're losing sunlight. I don't really want to be recording at night, as I feel the game gets much darker now, to the point to where you almost need that flashlight. So I'm just going to be harvesting some things, and uh, I'll be back in the morning, and hopefully some more progress has been made. Okay, everyone, so it is morning, day two, and we have a box. I went ahead and gathered enough resources to build our deployable here, the vehicle bay, which we will need at some point to build our Seamoth and Cyclops once we get to that point. I still haven't found any more pieces of the Seamoth, but I'm sure we will, given with time. I've also noticed with this new scanner, which is pretty cool, you can scan items. And once you do, it's actually in your data bank here. And uh, there's a bunch of kind of cool stuff in. Uh, so you even got the flora, what it does, the creep vine, uh, the fish, kind of what it does, the stalkers. You get information on a whole bunch of stuff in here, which is nice. It just gives us some more detail for the world and then also maybe the potential of kind of explaining some things just inherently by playing the game and scanning items I'm kind of generating some new terrain here so you have to excuse the FPS occasionally I've also built our O2 tank which is nice I need to build a knife at some point as well Caution. continued degradation of the Aurora's drive core may cause a quantum detonation 
calculating risk assessment. Death by malnourishment, 7%. By physical injury, 11%. By exposure to radioactive crash site materials, 19%. If the drive core is breached, probability of death increases to 65%. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not have the drive core would be breached, so, uh... Oh, what? 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 Oh, God. Okay. I'm going away from those things. I can't handle scares. Like, anything jump scary or noises in games. Uh, as you can probably tell, I'm not... I'm not very, uh, brave. So, let's keep searching around. Now what's making noise? It's still those gas things. All right, let's maybe go back to the base, find out what it takes to make a knife, because that is something we're going to need. With a feeling it's going to require some titanium, so let's grab some metal. We need to make a knife so we can harvest some of these coral pieces at some point. And then also for light defense, maybe. Hopefully we won't need to use it. I still love all these transition animations. Alright, personal tools. Travel knife, silicone rubber. Oh, I can make that. During the day, your power does recharge slowly, by the way, so that's something to keep in mind. So I got a knife now. Put that on my hop bar. By pressing the corresponding key when hovering over the item. I always forget that, because it's it's so uh, different than most survival games. Usually it's just a drag and drop function. Alright, let's uh, eat an air sack. I also need to drink one. Because the water is getting around 60%. Oh, what do we need to do now? Let's see. Personal tools. Don't need a flashlight. Habitat builder would be needed at some point, I'm sure. To take to make a computer chip. Uh, table coral sample samples, which we have a knife to get. And uh, something else. I don't think we're quite ready for that. Sea glide. Let's get that. So battery and a lubricant. So there's a battery. Sea glide is your first kind of quick transportation thing. Uh, lubricant. Lubricant. There we go. And let's build us a sea glide. There we go. It's good to see. Increases maximum underwater velocity to 9.5 meters a second and displays topographical information. Yes, it does. Takes up a decent amount of room, though, in your inventory. Let's salvage that metal, and then we will store it. I'm glad they added the whole shift-click to store things function. Always nice. We're almost out of inventory space, though, in our storage and on our character. So that's something that's going to be concerning here in a little while. But I can show you the sea glide. There we go. You get a nice little topographic map. I don't know how well you guys can see it. I'll look in the more darker areas. So you can kind of see an overlay of the area. And we do go fairly quick. Now I only go kind of short distances using that. I don't want to go too far as you have to make a battery to recharge it every time. So let's let's go ahead and do some more scanning maybe. Let's let's scan this. Oh I can't scan the coral shell plate, but I can harvest it. Can't I? Can't I? Okay, lag. There we go. Well it's weird. There. There's our samples. For science and technology and the future of my survival. Uh, the hard one is needed at some point. But I do need 
Let's, let's go ahead and search around for some sea moth fragments, because really, it's kind of the first big goal for us, is to get a sea moth up and running. And then at that point, we can start worrying about building a base. What? Oh, it's those things. I don't like those things. They're like these little flowers in caves that shoot out exploding puffer fish. Keep away from those, is what I recommend doing. Let's get out of this tiny crevice. I don't like that either. Cut creek vine with knife. You can get basic food by doing that as well. I'm just kind of on the lookout for sea moth fragments at this point. And take it relatively slow. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Oh, thank you for the warning, computer lady, who I have no name for. I'll call you Shannon. Shannon is a good name for her. Okay, Shannon. You just tell me when I need air. Because I'm not paying attention to that stat, and that thing is a stalker, and it can hurt me. Ooh, a volcano? What's down here? More of these weird crab things. Luckily, I can get air. What are you? So, we got some silver ore, which is good. Wow, this is actually gold, too? Alright. Plenty of silver. I think I want to grab... Let's see. We got four silver, one gold. Come on, grabbing maybe one more kind of gold. You can see how dark it is, by the way. Though some things do glow in the dark. Like a lot of the corals do. silver we'll take it there's a gold and there's that weird thing all right let's get out of this cave keep an eye out for sea moth fragments or any upgrade oh there's one modification station i don't know what you do but uh, apparently you modify stuff that will be handy eventually one out of three well this is a different terrain for sure Any more boxes? Looks like some type of evil fish are down there. Stay away from that. Up we go. Okay. Oh! Another one. What do we got here? Sea moth fragment. I'll tell you what, we're already, uh, I think, at the end of this episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm actually rather excited to get back into this game. It is a good one, you know. I did play, as I said, I believe last last time that I I enjoyed natural selection from the same developers and things, even back when it was a mod. So for me, it's just happy to see, you know, them to make good games continually. Oh, another fragment by a stalker, but I don't care right now. It's a sea moth fragment. Let's see if we can't. Oh boy. Where, where'd it go? I saw your shadow. Oh god, it's like right above me. Uh. Alright, through here. Nope, I don't have enough air for that. Up we go. Where's my ship? There it is. Okay, so I'll continue to hunt for sea moth fragments between episodes. I got a little interrupted there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the episode, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and check out my other videos uh, for more creative goodness. Go ahead and leave a like. Leave a comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time.